in this section, we are going to talk about authentication, how we can authenticate our REST API request. OAuth 2.0 is the industry standard protocol for authorization. It can used to authenticate our request. There are different ways to authenticate REST APIs. Basic authentication, digest, OAuth 2.0. OAuth 2.0 is a industry standard. It focuses on client developer simplicity while providing a specific authorization flows for web application, desktop application. This framework provide token and token management. Let us talk about the JWT. JSON web token, we can read from here, can be used as OAuth2 bearer tokens to encode all relevant parts of an access code, access token. So if you need more information, you can refer these links. Let us talk about how we can implement authentication in our API automation framework. So REST Sharp latest version has moved the authenticator into the REST client. So REST client has property called authenticator. So while creating object of REST clients, we can pass the tokens to this property. So we have authenticator property and we can pass the token, but how the token will be passed? So what we can do, we can create a separate class which will be responsible for generating bearer tokens and passing to this property. So let us say I will create a new class, say API Authenticator, which will be responsible for generating tokens. So let us add a separate folder called auth. Inside this folder, I can add a class as I mentioned API Authenticator. You can name it as per your requirement. Make this class as public. We are going to inherit a abstract class which Reshar provide that is Authenticator Base. Authenticator Base will inherit from the REST Sharp authenticators. So if we look into this class, abstract class, there is a method get authentication parameter and the property token. So we are going to implement this method and see how we can utilize to get the tokens. So now we have to implement this abstract method Okay. There is a error it is showing. There is no argument given that corresponds to the required format, formal parameter token. Okay. So what we can do, we can pass this as a blank parameter to the base constructor or parent class constructor. So before that, let us understand like how 
the bearer token can be generated. So to generate bearer token, sometimes we need a separate URL and client ID and client secret. So all these informations we can get get from the the team with whom we work. So let us say I would define few variables, base URL. If it is different from your server URL, client ID, string client secret. And these client ID, client secret differ from environment to environment. So for QA environment, it may be different. For UAT environment, it, it will be different. So we have to manage accordingly. So better to place all these value in some configuration file from where we can read. I'm assuming in this section, I'll, I'm hard coding here or I can pass from the constructor. All right. Let us create a constructor and I can say base and I'm passing as a blank token to the parent class constructor. Fine. Okay, so Let us see how we can implement this get authentication parameter. Okay. So we can say define a variable called token and we'll write one method get token. So before this, I need to check if the token is null or empty. Okay. Await. And this method I'm going to define. Okay, so let us define this method. All right, so we have to create the client. So in the same way as we created for API client. So I can say rest client options from the rest shop. And I can pass the base URL here. All right. Now I can say client. new rest client and I'll pass this option here and authenticator rest sharp uses http basic authenticator where I'll pass the client id and client secret. Fine. So this, uh, I have to send a request to get the token. So I can utilize the rest request. 
here i have to provide the the end point you can check like what is the end point and you can provide normally it may be like this if it differs you can make the changes here accordingly and i'll add the parameter i can write uh, add parameter so we have to pass the grant type in case of bearer tokens and grant type sometimes it is password sometimes it is client credentials so if we if it is password we need to pass user id and password if it is client credentials then we need to pass the client id and client secret so i am assuming it is grant type is client credentials and we have to mention in the same way as i'm writing here all right now i have to send the response send the request and get the response i mean client dot post a sync and here i will use the request which i have created now when this post async async will return the response it returns the the model which will pass here so let us define a model and i can add under response and i can say this token response because when we get the response token it will have a json and there will be some properties so i am thinking there will be some properties name let us define those properties public string and suppose i can say you can according to the the response you can give the the value property name here i can just say token type and i can define one more property string and say access token all right so token type will be bearer the name bearer will be there and access token will be alphanumeric value and this model i can provide here token response let us import this i have to make this method as a sync and i have to return this response so how i'll return this response so i can say response dot token type and i'll also re return the response of uh the token value so the way which we can use all right and we can pass as a string response dot access token all right
this method is complete to get the token. Now we have to make this as a sync as well. And we have to return this as a header parameter. So we can use new header parameter. And rest sharp, as I have mentioned, moved all the known headers as here. And we can add the authorization and the token value. So this is the only required thing we have to do to generate the token. And once it is generated, we have to pass the token to authenticator. So our client, while creating the client itself, we are attaching the token and the subsequent request will be authenticated. So let us import this. Okay, we do not have to use this, yeah. So these are the changes we have to make to implement authentication in API automation framework.